after a fantastic day of break dancing and a little bit of Donkey Kong on the old Atari 2600, I got inspired to create a fantastic new quilt for all of you. It's a pixel quilt and I'm ready to get started. That's right, music fans, you know me and you know how much I love my music. And funny enough, these pixel quilts or watercolor quilts or color wash quilts, it's all the same style, all the same method, but I love how we're going back to some of the 80s style artwork to make these really fun and kind of modern quilts, right? So now this quilt here is my double cassette boom box. And what I'm gonna teach you is gonna show you exactly how to make this, but this one's a little bit big to be working on quickly on this set today. I have a portable version I'd like to share with you. That's right everyone, the old cassette player, I believe it was called the Walkman. At any rate, we're going to give you this fun printable right here. We've got a pattern for the boom box, but we also have printed out nice and small for you. If you want to count out those squares, you can, and that's all it is. It's just a counting of the squares and laying out your stuff. However, there's a really easy trick. No, we're not going to sew all of those two inch squares together. We're going to fuse them first, just like this. Now, my dear friends over at Quilt Smart have this fantastic interfacing, and it is. It's a super lightweight interfacing, and I'm hoping you can tell there are grid marks on it, and they come in different sizes. We're using the two inch squares here, but the cool thing about a pixel quilt is you can do any different graphic design just by changing it. And another place that I saw a lot of cool inspiration was kind of looking for perler bead designs. It's another great place to get inspired for making your own pixel quilt designs. However, Let's talk about this real quick. The packaging comes in panel sizes and the panels may be spliced together one of two ways. It's such a lightweight interfacing that if I need to make a larger, because this is over the back of everything, I guess I forgot to tell you that, this is the back of everything, I need a larger piece, I can do one of two. I can overlap one entire set of grids and then build out my design this way. Or even better, what I like to do is I will build my entire design on the two individual pieces because later on after everything is fused down, we're gonna fold along these seam lines and stitch. So basically what I'm saying is we can build a half a quilt and another half of a quilt and then we would lay them with their right sides together, make that quarter inch seam and it would join the two half quilts after they've been fused. Maybe you're not quite following along yet. Maybe I should show you what we're gonna do and how we're gonna fuse it. So I'm gonna bring this over a little bit closer here. And I'm using the Robert Kaufman solids. I just love this bundle of fabric. I picked it up so I could do a bunch of different quilts with it. And you're probably seeing that in some of the tutorials that have been coming out lately. And what I've done now is I've taken my printable and I've counted out my squares and you can see that I've drawn onto the fused side. And the fused side, there's a little bit of a bumpy texture. The other side is really nice and soft. It actually feels almost like Kleenex. So this rough side is the side that I want up. And because it's up, I'm gonna be able to go ahead and just count out my designs and start to Sharpie marker onto the grid line. Now, I want to make a big point out of that because some of our fabrics, like the ones I use in the background, are white fabrics. And every now with like a white or a pink or a, a pale yellow, you might get some bleed through. Now, we're going to be folding along these grid lines. So that will be in the seam allowance. It'll never be seen in the front of the quilt. But I don't want you to take the time to write on here any of your color names, because if you write your color names, that wording may show through later on. So just take the grid out like that, and then you're just going to go ahead and follow the pixel diagram to go ahead and start laying your pieces where they go around the quilt. So I'm going to start in the center where the cassette is. And I wanted to point out, now this is a legitimate project, right? Because the cassette here that you have will certainly fit in one of the two dub sides on our boom box so that you can make yourself your own dance and party mix for your quilting studio, right? At any rate, I've got my pre-cut squares because it makes it so fast and easy to go with my dark fabrics. And so I just kind of like to go through and pick out the ones I need and I'm just gonna place them. Now with our placement, we don't have to be super particular yet, but I am gonna take a little time and fuss once all of the pieces are in place. And if you ever find that something's being a little precarious, you certainly could use like your Clover mini iron and just touch the centers to hold a piece in place for some reason if it was moving around. But I sure found that everything bonded very nicely to my Quilt Smart. 
So I'm going to go around and put all of my squares down first because I'm going to need to press it all at once and I want to show you how to do that before we can go over to the sewing machine. So I tell you what, let me finish this up and I'll be right back. Welcome back. I've got my design all laid out and I didn't quite point out, but I left kind of my half squares up here just loose. So I've finished all the way to the edge, but there is glue up here. So as I get ready to iron and glue down here, hanging off the edge of the board. So as I get ready to iron, what I really want to do is I want to go through and adjust any squares. And I'm using my little metal stiletto or a purple thing or heck a toothpick would probably work. But I just want to make sure that there's not big areas of glue showing through. If there's a little bit of overlap in a spot, it won't be a big deal. But I'm just making sure that it looks as tidy as possible. Then I'm going to come back in to the center and I'm going to go ahead and like press, press. And I'm going to start bonding down all of these layers here of my little two inch squares or whatever size you're using for your grid. And once I get it fairly pressed down, I am going to glide the iron over it one more time. We want these pressed down pretty darn securely because we're going to be folding along each one of those printed grid lines that was there and running these through the sewing machine so that we don't have to sew each little two inch edge together. That's how it was originally done. Now, I'm going to give a little bit of steam in my iron to get it good and hot because now you can see I'm kind of gliding over here just to make sure that everything is secured. And we're almost ready for the sewing machine. Doesn't matter what kind of thread, but I'm going to use cotton. Doesn't matter which color. And what I like to think about is I want to find the long seams first. This little unit, I believe, was a 11 by 12. So basically, I'd be folding the 12s instead of the 11s. On the boom box, I made all of the long seams first as I was going across because it secures two sides of our square. So if pieces want to start to fall off because of just the size that we have, then um, we can kind of capture them, I should say, because we once we get all the verticals done, we have those Last rows, everything's secure. All right, I'm ready for that machine. I bet you are too. Now, I've got a quarter inch edge guide on the machine. I'm gonna fold this so it is right sides together here. And I like to do a little finger crease. And I can see already that that first square slipped away from me. You probably caught me there. No problem, because I'm going right to the machine right now. If other ones are falling off, we're gonna wanna secure those. And that's simply because I was rushing through the ironing. Of course, you would not be doing that. I'm going to look at that grid line. I'm going to lock in my stitches up here, capturing that one little loose square. We're going to sew all the way through the end. Might as well use your thread cutter if you have one. Now, I'm just going to keep working from the machine. I'm not going to go start pressing these seams back open. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I guess I better take a minute and hit this one more time with the heater. Because <laughs> what I'm going to show you is the next fold over. And I was just going a bit too quick. Now my steam's kicking in. That's good. That really, that steam really helps on this interfacing. 
I had the steam turned off on the iron on the first time. So if you're wondering what the heck is that guy doing today, simply just going a little too quickly. One of my mantras recently has become thinking about the journey, not just the destination. So getting all of this set down properly is that journey, not just the finished product for us all. Now, we're gonna come back and we're gonna fold what would be the second and third seam lines together. And this one is gonna go pretty good. But the next maybe two seam allowances, I need to be careful that this first square doesn't start to curl underneath and start to tuck underneath. I won't explain how I found that one out. <laughs> and it wasn't on this, but it was years ago I did. Oh no, now you know how I found it out anyways. So again, another quarter inch seam. We're gonna blow through this pretty quick. And now you can see how great my squares are holding once I got that steam nice and hot in there. And as I said, I'm literally just gonna go through and I'm gonna sew all of these rows, one after the next, after the next, after the next, so that when it is all done, it comes back out of the magic of television and it's getting a little shorter one direction. But what you can see here now, I have all of these folds done. Now, there's a couple of different ways to address this. I'm gonna teach you the proper way, uh, industry standard, which is going to go ahead and create a snip at each fold, like yay, so I can fan them backwards. So I have one layer to still do, and what I found was if I could get an ironing surface that I could then just kinda put over the edge, then you can see how that fold, or I used the edge of my table at home, and then I can just go through and I can just go snip, 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 and you can use scissors or snippers. You wanna make sure you get all the way through. And here's the cool thing. You could actually cut through those threads that you did already, not, not too far, but we're gonna go ahead and sew this direction. So even if you hit the threads, it's actually be better than being short. So I gotta get all of these cut through, and of course I'm using a pretty small pair of scissors, but all of the rest I did at home for us. So now we're ready to go back on over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew the other direction. So now here I'm going back to what would be right sides together, correct? And what I really want to point out is I'm going to take the time to make sure each seam is folded or fanned in opposite directions. So as I approach the machine right now, I have my little stiletto handy because that's going to also help and I'm pushing the upper seam up and the bottom seam down. It makes it easy to see. But the next row, that's gonna be opposite because that seam is already gonna be set in the down position. So let me see if I can do this a little slow so you can understand. Okay, this seam is coming down. This seam is going up. And I like to have my little stiletto handy so I can just lift under to keep it real flat. And what that's doing for us is it's keeping the bulk management in our favor so when we machine quilt, we don't have to avoid those corners. That's basically the reason. So you can see this pace is much, much more precise. And that's why the quilt on the back wall behind me looks so terrific because all the squares are kind of stitched this way instead of individually. Okay, almost done for us. <laughs> Go all the way to the end, please. <laughs> Now, with that being said, let's, let's point out what I was trying to say here. Now, these seam allowances here have started to crisscross or fan open. When I go to do the next row, I'm going to pinch it and fold it, but this part here has already been pressed up. So then it's still going to press up, so then the next one on the top is going to press down. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm just making sure that I get off to a good start on the first one because I let my eye look up to the seam I just created to make sure that the next one is going correctly. So that's now going up, that's going down. 
and that's all you're gonna have to do to get your pixel quilt all stitched together onto the interfacing. So let's finish this out and I'll talk you through the rest of it. And you can probably see how much quicker the seams start to go once the other side had been created. It starts to fold it over for you. So as a reminder, you're gonna do now all of the rest of the other direction, and you're gonna leave the interfacing in. There's absolutely no way to remove it, let alone reason to. It adds a nice little bit of a body to our quilt. And then if you will, follow me back over here to the quilt sample itself, right? And like I said, I did do stitch in the ditch, but I didn't do every single row, and I used some white thread hoping it would pretty much hide, and for the most part, it really did. So basically, I counted across from the center over, and I basically did every other row down, and then every other row across. So they're stitching here, not here, here again, and that holds it together, but it doesn't make it too compact, so it still has some nice loft to it. But of course, this would be a fantastic place to go back in and free motion machine quilt. I think I probably better do some play and some pause buttons, which I know you all use, so that you can stop Watch what we've done and follow along in your own home studios so that you can enjoy all these great projects right here at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action.